Life is like a game of chess. I just want to evaluate to what extent it's true and how we can use that as a lesson to improve the quality of our lives. I've been playing chess as a club player since the age of uh, 12. I've played chess for a long time and it's certainly true to say that it's taught me a lot of lessons in life. Here's what life teaches you. There's almost always someone better because chess has a scoring system, it has a ranking system, and it's possible to learn to be good at chess. The objective of chess is to beat the opponent, is to checkmate the king. And the first lesson that chess teaches all of us is that we can only control what we do. The opponent, let's compare the opponent to life, the universe, society. The opponent does things to us, they make their own moves. We can do several things. We can determine the strategy. We can force the opponent to respond to us. Chess is a game. If you take life less seriously and you treat life as a game, and it's fun, and you can win, you can lose, but here's the thing with chess. Even if you lose, it's not the end, you haven't died. You can just have another game. You can improve your game and you can come back again. But the strategic choice I took, my opening, if you like, was to buy a property at the age of 17. How did you do that, Paul? Well, I worked really hard, I saved a load of money, I worked three jobs, and in addition to that, I was a servant in a large house, so I didn't have to spend any money. I was determined, I learned, I forced the opening. This book isn't chess openings, this is business valuation. So if you want to force the valuation of a business, you could do worse than read this McKinsey & Co book on how do you force the valuation of a company. You can learn chess from first principles. You could never read a book on chess and you could make up all the openings. You could freestyle it. But the next lesson that I want to come to in chess, competitive chess, is the clock. You make your move, you press the clock. Now, the opponent's under pressure. Life is no different, apart from people tend to believe for whatever reason, that there's no limit to how many minutes or hours or days they've got on their clock. That's not true. I want you, every time you're competing in the game of life, to imagine that you've done something. Doosh. Life has now got a certain amount of time to respond to what you've done. When it's done that, it's your turn to move. So when it's your turn to move, you need to be really focused. You need to be using the time that nothing's happening when your opponent's clock is ticking to work out what you're doing next. So in chess, you might open with a, a queen's gambit or a king's gambit, or you might want to fin shadow your bishop. I don't know how you want to play, but what I do know is that using a recognized opening that narrows down the billions of opportunities to only millions of different strategic variations is a very smart thing to do because you put yourself in control. In my case, I bought a property when I was very, very young. Why is that good? Because of compound interest, the increase of property over time, the increase in rent over time, the decrease in money value over time. I knew all those things at the age of 17. How? Well, my dad used to buy properties. We would live in them as a family. I would help him do them up and we would sell them. My granddad did the same thing. I'd learned from the family tradition, from the Smith book, if you like, that that was a good opening play. That was a good opening gambit, if you like. But the other thing that I was doing to create my wealth was I was refurbishing this property. I bought it, I refurbished it, and I sold it because I'd read the book. I'd read the book of tax rules in the UK. And I knew if I sold the property, I wouldn't have to be worried about tax of any kind because it was my home, I lived there. Bought it for 9,000 pounds, spent about 1,500 quid on it, so let's call it 10, 11,000 pounds in total. I sold it for 32,000 pounds. When you're in the game of life and you've got 32,000 pounds in your pocket, cash, and you're only 20 years old, you are ahead of the game. You have put pressure on life to actually respond to you. Strategy is critical. Education is critical. But it needs to be the right kind of education. Did any of you ever read this business valuation handbook in school? Did any of you do it for your degrees? Some of you might have done if you did a business degree. My most valuable degree, undoubtedly, was my MBA, my Master's in Business Administration, which was where my thirst for knowledge like this was satisfied. If you want to be a property investor, we can help you satisfy your thirst for knowledge. 
and we can help you to avoid the simple mistakes. Within reason, I don't mind how you learn to play the game of life, but the rules of the game of life are these. Number one, time is your most valuable asset, and that is literally true in competitive chess as well, isn't it? It's a game, treat it as a game. Just because you lose a game of chess, your life isn't over. Just because a business project doesn't work out, your life isn't over, you can play another game. Number three, educate yourself. Read all the books, podcasts, YouTube, whatever you can get your hand on to give yourself a competitive advantage. Number four, when it comes to the competition, there is a ranking system. And I'm gonna share with you the ranking system for the game of life. It's very simple, it's called money. Because if you wanna live your best possible life, you have to have money. People say to me, ah, oh, but you know, Paul, money doesn't buy you happiness. That's because they don't know how to use it. If you use your money to invest in your highest values, to create your legacy, to do whatever it is that you're born to do, that buys your happiness. See all these similar similarities between the game of life and the game of chess. And I just wanna bust a few myths while I'm at it. Somebody told me, oh, you know, chess is very popular. And you know, Andrew Tate plays chess and he's very good at it. Okay, well, what you need to do sometimes, you know, people say that he's very good at the game of life. Well, appears to be. Apart from, he's now facing serious criminal charges in the UK and Romania, unless I'm very much mistaken. And these are pretty much the top end of the most serious charges you can face. Oh, he's a super genius. He's just much maligned. He's not really that bad. Andrew Tate's a good guy. It's just the press don't get him. Hmm. Well, let's compare that to his chess ranking. I Googled his chess ranking and his chess ranking is 1,600. And apparently he was playing Piers Morgan, whose chess ranking is 1,300. Well, okay, that means they're kind of decent club players. It doesn't mean they're grandmasters. Grandmaster, a true grandmaster in the game of life, you know, the Warren Buffetts, the Bill Gates, the Sir Richard Bransons, the Sestelioses, the true grandmasters, the billionaires. Well, if you want to be a grandmaster in the game of chess, your entry point is a, is a score of 2,400. There is not one snowflake in hell's chance that Andrew Tate could actually be anybody that's at grandmaster level in chess. Couldn't do it. And in the same way, the way he's put together his rather wobbly, shaky, shady business empire is not an example of how to win at the game of life. It's an example of how to fake it until you make it, pretend, show off all sorts of possessions. Somebody said to me, Paul, what kind of Lamborghini have you got? Well, I haven't got one. Well, why not? You're supposed to be wealthy. Okay, so there's a sort of stereotypical wealthy person who's permanently on a beach, puffing big cigars while they're driving around their Lamborghinis with probably six or seven scantily clad women in the back seat. That's the fantasy aspiration of someone that isn't actually wealthy. Wealthy people don't do that. What wealthy people do is whatever is their highest value. Same in chess. The fact that my opponent might be singing, dancing, shouting, cavorting with naked ladies and smoking cigars, the other side of that board, playing against me, I couldn't care less. That means absolutely nothing to me. What matters is that I win, not what they do. Please, be focused on your life. The only person, ultimately, that you need to beat is the person that you were yesterday. I want to help you to win at the game of life using property investment strategies to become wealthy. I wanna give you a plan, I wanna give you a strategy, I wanna give you a 32 page document. Under this video, there's a link and it's called your wealth appraisal. There are six different dimensions to wealth. I don't wanna to go too far into it because I want you to go on that discovery yourself. I want you to value yourself enough to learn your wealth score. Because just like there's a chess score, guess what? There's a wealth score. Touchdown Education, myself, my companies, we've spent many, many thousands of pounds, tens of thousands of pounds studying this for years, and we've put together a completely free, complimentary wealth appraisal. It's gonna cost you five minutes of your life, but no money. What it's gonna do is make you think deeply about how do you win at the game of life? How do you become wealthy? Not like Andrew Tate and all those chances, but genuinely wealthy within your values. If your highest values are your family, your church, travel, those are the things that you need to focus on. But in order to support your family and your loved ones, in order to support your church, in order to travel, those things all require money. They all require wealth. How do you get more of this stuff called money and wealth in order that you can live within your highest value? That is your question, not mine. So please, 
As soon as you finish watching this, click on the link below, do your wealth appraisal, and what you'll get is a mark out of 100 in six different areas with solid action plans, points, learnings from books like this to take you to your next stage of your wealth creation and protection journey. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you really enjoy playing chess or other game of your choice. And I hope you enjoy learning. You've been wonderful. I've been Paul. See you next time.